Hello, and welcome back. We are here for another week of Overwatch League Season number 5 predictions. So, looking at our pickums, um, crystal ball picks, just as a refresher, we got Glads, we got Shock. That's looking pretty good right now. Uh, Dragon Soul, we're not sure yet. So, uh, we had one week of action uh, only in the West. As you can see, the East region has not started yet. They start tomorrow. Um, and then we got a whole bunch of games for them as well as the West. So we're going to, you know, run through all of them. But we're going to take a quick look at the predictions. Um, first off, for uh, how we did week number one. So a little bit of a rough start with, uh, you know, London, uh, you know, taking an upset victory, almost getting reverse swept, but they held Florida off. Um, and then San Francisco dismantling Dallas. Um, so it was off on those. But then we got on a bit of a roll, you know, getting Washington, um, Washington correct, and then, you know, London, uh, Boston. Gladiators, we got, you know, plus three. Um, you know, and then going forward, we got Atlanta wrong. Atlanta, again, dominated Dallas. Dallas off to a very, very, very bad start uh, at 0-2 oh, oh and 0-6 oh and in maps in um, in this, what do they call it, midseason madness? Yeah, midseason madness. So, uh, we got a big six points. We got the double pointer um, right with the score line, so that was nice. And we got um, all four of the you know, I didn't, not too surprising uh, outcomes in those. So a pretty solid start. Leaderboards aren't quite out yet. I'm trying to view them earlier. Um, but, yeah, I was pretty happy about last week's picks. Um, in terms of the meta, we saw a bunch of Sojourn, as I'm sure you saw if you watched, um, which is awesome. She's really really fun to watch um you know i do think she's gonna get balanced and tuned down um you know the next patch but i'm totally fine with her being very very good and being you know the focal point um especially for the league right now i think that's what you know that's what it needs showing off that new hero um and man is she fun like her she's a very very well designed hero um you know you get the you get the the skill pop off ability, you know, with her charge shots and her alt lending to, you know, having a lot of charge shots, um, you know, and then her movement with her slide jump is really, really sick as well. Um, so we saw a lot of that, um, you know, paired with the tracer a lot of the time. Um, we saw some teams that really like running the echo. We saw more somber than we had been seeing, um, although that didn't. It worked in spots for teams. Um, I would say overall. The Sojourn is kind of just better. We did see a little bit of Ash as well. Um, you know, not much Soldier at all after he got his little uh, damage nerf. Uh, you know, and Sojourn got her buffs. So, you know, I, it's gonna be it's gonna be a telling week. You know, I I love week twos. They're you know, and it, it's the first week for the East, so it's not gonna be quite as telling. But for the West, you know, we're really gonna see um, which teams are really really strong in this. But in any case. We are going to go into the East predictions. Um, one bit of news. A couple of days ago, the Guangzhou Charge uh, dropped Eileen from their roster. Um, you know, c citing um, conduct like that could be disruptive or um, harmful to the team. So, that's a loss for them. Um, you know, that leaves them with just Choi Se Wan and Develop, which is still a pretty solid uh, duo. But you are losing out on a DPS and a, you know, a player that is really good you know a couple of years ago so um you know another a hit for the charge who haven't been off to a strong start anyway um but without further ado we go into these matches where we got los angeles valiant taking on the philadelphia fusion so philly another heartbreaker last time out had a really nice stage you know it did better than i think a lot of people thought they would but they got to that grand finals and it just it never it never came together they got just blown out of the water by the dynasty 4-0 none of the maps were particularly close either so um you know a good stage but at the same time kind of frustrating in this matchup i think they got the edge um you know when it comes to probably i mean it's gonna be mn3 or <sighs> carpe I, I would assume carpe is gonna be on sojourn but he's also a really good tracer so we'll see what they do with it um they have options, you know, they have their, their three man DPS, um, line that they, they've 
rotated quite a bit so far, so they're going to be solid. Um, but I don't think that they're going to be overly dominant here. Valiant has put up a lot of good fights against teams so far. I'm going to say Philly 3-1. to one. Uh, After that, you got our reigning champs in the East. Seoul Dynasty taking on the Chengdu Hunters. So Hunters struggling in that first stage you know missing out on the on the kickoff clash um finals but this is still a talented team i think soul takes it down um i think that they have really really good coverage um you know it doesn't matter really what the dps meta is they have the dps to fit that and i think that that's really really important in overwatch 2 um the other important thing is that you always have a um, you have enough coverage, whether it's with one tank or two, you know, most teams it's going to be two, but you have enough coverage and then synergy as well, um, to be able to, you know, put in a player, no matter what the meta is. I have a sneaking suspicion. We're going to see a good amount of wrecking ball in the East. Um, we saw a little bit of wrecking ball from some teams in the West and the East is generally more apt to go to those dive kind of compositions, you know, your Winston's, your wrecking ball, um, I also think we're going to see a lot of Echo, um, but, you know, I think Soldier is will definitely be in the mix as well. So, you know, in that case, Soul's still looking really, really nice. Like I said, you know, the, with such a stacked team, they're going to have good coverage in about everything. Um, you know, but I don't want to discount the Hunters or count them out because, you know, they have hop-off ability. Um, the Kickoff Clash never really, it never really fit for them. Maybe the shift in the meta is what they need to get going but for now i like this uh, dynasty in that one and then we go back to the hanjo guanjo uh, rivalry we're gonna go with the spark here um quite the disappointing kickoff clash for them um the qualifiers were great you know getting a bunch of victories being the number one seed and then they lost twice in a row uh, in the playoffs so that was rough but this is still a team that's building, you know, they're still off to a good start in the overall season standings. Um, then they're just, they're a better team than the charge right now. In my view, I'm going to go with a three Oh here. I think some of these are going to get a bit snowball-y. Um, but yeah, you know, charge losing a, a staple of their lineup, you know, when, when they were at their strongest, you know, when they look really, really good for, um, what tournament was that? I think that was, it was before countdown cup. Uh, but it was the third tournament where they made the finals, did fall to Shanghai, um, but Eileen was really, really good in Genji meta. Um, that was in the, I don't remember the name of that tourney, but the um, that was when in the West, um, Paris was really good when they still had Sparkle in the gang, because um, Genji was meta and Sparkle was just going crazy, and they ended up winning uh, that tournament behind him, you know, taking down Philly in a thrilling title match, but... Um, in any case, you know, that's going to hurt charge. It just will. Um, and I think that the Spark are going to take a pretty easy victory in that one. Next, we move on to a great match. We got Seoul Dynasty against Shanghai Dragons. These guys scored off multiple times, um, you know, in the kickoff clash and in the previous years. And maybe Seoul, maybe they're finally starting to get over that Shanghai curse. And while Shanghai is still really, really good this year, um... They don't look, you know, through one tourney, they do not look as head and shoulders above the, you know, the rest of the crowd as I think a lot of us thought they would be or as they were in the latter half of last season. But we do have to remember that last season, um, you know, they got off to a good start, but they did lose um, the first tourney in the finals to Dallas and they would go on to win um, several the next two after that. So... I don't think we have to worry about Shanghai too much. This almost feels like a better meta for them. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say the Dragons in five. Maybe that's not out on a limb. I don't think predicting any result in the in the match between these two is really um, out there. Maybe a 3-0 on either side is pretty unbelievable, but you never know. Um, after that, you got the Chengdu Hunters taking on the Philly Fusion. Last time we went for an upset here, I'm going to go Philly. I'm going to actually say, uh, yeah, I'm going to say they get the revenge. They go 3-0. I just think that this meta lines up really well for Philly's DPS line. And, 
you know, it, it's also going to depend on what we see for tank. You know, we saw a lot of Sigma out of the Western region. You know, we saw a little bit of Winston. Wasn't particularly effective, particularly out of Toronto. Um, like I said, we saw just a little bit of ball on certain uh, certain maps, certain points. Um, but we'll see. You know, London still did their Rhine thing. Um it's going to it's going to be close. I do think it's wrecking ball. I'm kind of that's just it keeps eking into my mind and it's influencing like okay, who's going to be really good at the ball and you know, who's really going to be good at the Winston? You know, what are we going to see? We could see any tank really besides Roadhog or Arisa. We will not see either of those two. Um but we could see some Zarya as well. Um but in any case, I like Philly in that matchup. I just think they're a better um uh, they're a better fit than than the Hunters right now. And the Hunters are just, they're, I'm not going to really jump back on the bandwagon until I start to see some good matches out of them. I can't have much confidence in them until then. Anyways, we got LA Valiant taking on the charge after that. I think this is going to be a match that's back and forth. You know, we're going to see some really nice plays. We're going to see some sloppy plays. We're going to see, you know, maps that one team dominates and then the uh, then they just kind of mess up on the next. But I think the Valiant win in the end they have a pennant for, you know, going down to the wire this season. But I do think that they're a little bit of a better team in terms of just execution so far this season. And, you know, they had a couple of rough map fives early on. Those were against, you know, really good teams. And the Charge did beat them. That is the Charge's only win on the season. They beat Valiant early. Um, but I think that Valiant get their revenge here. I just think they're a little bit better on pretty much every front right now whether it's the back line or the tank position. And finally, we got the Spark taking on the Dragons. So, again, intriguing matchup here. Um, you know, What kind of Spark do we see? Do we see the Spark that's great? Do we see the Spark that flamed out of the kickoff clash? You know, they're a great team. But Shanghai is generally more consistent. Shy is probably going to just be nasty on the Sojourn, though. Oh, I can't wait to see that. But overall, I like I like the Shanghai team diff. I really do. Um, especially tank-wise, if we see Sigma or if we see Wrecking Ball, I think they have a pretty big advantage. The only way, if we see a lot of Winston, I think it equalizes a bit more for the Spark, but... As it stands right now, I just like Shanghai's odds to come into this meta a bit better. Um, you know, I know they had a rough start to the the kickoff clash, but I think that's that's kind of behind them in my eyes. So I got the Dragons taking that one down three to one. So that is the Eastern region. Moving on to the West, as you can see, uh, no Thursday matches this week. Um, we got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, three matches each day. More back to our you know towards the normal you know we had four matches on sunday last time out but we have teams that are trying to you know start to potentially lock in those spots you know if you're moving to three and oh um you know you're going to be looking in really good shape and you know the teams that started out zero and one or zero and two are you know are going to be looking to bounce back before this um you know before the qualifiers just slip away from them entirely so we got new york excelsior against london spitfire london had a really good time out, you know, winning both of their matches um, this past week. New York, a bit rough, taking, taking a couple L's, um, you know, losing in a very, very close map five to Paris. Paris getting their first win of the season. Congrats to them. But New York, they're just, it's kind of a struggle bus right now. Um, you know, every day my, my initial power rankings of them look worse, but I'm going to say they get one. London has been inconsistent at times. They look really good on a couple of maps and then just kind of get complacent or just like don't really match up on another map well. But London has clearly been a better team, you know, through the the whole this whole season and particularly week one um, of the midseason madness. So um, with that being said, I think London takes it down and it's not super close. Very, very interesting one next. You got Florida Mayhem taking on Dallas Fuel. So, um, if you remember from week one, Florida got off to that you know rough start, almost came back against um, London. They did then take down Toronto 3-1. to one, But Toronto, Toronto was very much disappointing me. Um, you know, playing 
just felt like not very good outdated comps to be honest i i, I would put that more on the coaching staff than the players um but they they very much so look like a one-trick team if they have muse in they look better when they have hotba but still some struggles so you know, these are two teams where it's like, how do you really quantify them? You know, Dallas is off to an awful start, but they did play Atlanta and San Francisco, who are both excellent teams. So it's hard to be like, oh, well, they're just garbage this stage. You know, there are definitely red flags, but they also played very good opponents. You know, much stiffer competition than Florida had. Um, that being said, we're, we're going to go for Florida. Because when Florida played the meta comps, you know, when they had Hydron in, they had Exe in for a little bit. They did lose that map, however. Uh, but Hydron looks really, really good on uh, the Sojourn. So I think that that's going to be a boon for them. Dallas just, they don't look comfortable on the meta right now. And I just don't really see them uh, beating Florida in the meta comp straight up so there might be a map where they can kind of take it you know off and do a little bit of weird stuff but their dps is just kind of struggling right now to be completely honest you know whether it's edison whether it's sparkle um gurio it's we haven't really seen doha um it's been a bit rough for them i think they need somebody to really start picking up on the sojourn and start playing better on her otherwise they're gonna struggle this this tourney they just are. It's not like they're magically going to start stomping teams if they don't make significant improvements. And could they make those improvements and start stomping? Absolutely. But until I see one of their DPS really start to flourish on the Sojourn, I'm just not confident in their chances right now. Uh, Vancouver Titans versus Atlanta Rain. <sighs> bit rough. Uh, Vancouver, you bring in Dipe, a uh, longtime coach of the Gladiators. Um, you bring in Mir. You know, player and contenders and then uh, gladiators the last couple of seasons started playing more of those doomfist comps looked decent against gladiators did lose 3-0 but then they just got blown out of the water by houston that one was ugly from the beginning um it just looks like complete disconnects at times and it you know it makes sense with mirror being new you know new coach in there's going to be some ups and some downs but I'm going to go Atlanta 3-0 here. Do not feel good about Vancouver's chances. They just, they feel like they don't quite understand how to give themselves an identity yet. And it, it really shows. You know, Shockwave had some really nice moments on the Sojourn. You know, Aspire had some nice uh, maps as Tracer. But a little bit of inconsistency from them. And then just the, you know, what's going on with the main tank. You know, they had False in for a map or two. Mostly Mirror. But, you know, Mirror looks like he's more of that Doomfist one trick. Although he's played a lot of Zari in the league before. Um, but False is an off-tank player. So he's a little more natural, you'd say, on the Zarya. So it's a little bit rough for them right now. I don't I don't think that they quite know what's going on yet. You know, I have faith in Dipe. He's a great coach. Um, but they're not, <laughs> they're not good enough. And they haven't made the adjustments enough to be able to, you know, even challenge Atlanta. Next, you got Toronto versus Washington. So I'm going to go for the Justice here. Like I said, Toronto, they'll look good on a map, and then they'll just kind of look really flat and not great on the other three. That that feels like the Toronto that we're going to get now against, you know, decent or really good teams. Um, they're kind of like Vancouver. Well, they're not even like Vancouver. Where it's just like until I see their coaching staff and their, you know, their shot calling – until I see more confidence, more creativity, um, more, you know, actual understanding of the, of the meta, you know, we had their first couple of matches. We had some great moments from Hisu, some pop off moments. He also had some throws, but besides that, there wasn't much to see from this Toronto squad. You know, Hotba played well when he was in, but until they figure it out, they're quick. They're very, very quickly falling down the ranks for me. Next, you got San Francisco versus Atlanta Rain. So, two teams that are off to great starts. I'm going to say that San Francisco gets their revenge. Uh, of course, in the kickoff clash, Atlanta did take down San Francisco um, in the uh, winners round two. I think San Fran is going to get a handle on it, though. Um, you know, between 
you want to talk about a, a team that's well suited for tracer sojourn you know if you have tracer you have kilo or if you have proper on tracer kilo on sojourn you know you can maybe go vice versa they look really really good either way you know when it comes to um you know the wrecking ball mikey looked good on it you know in his debut with the team um but you know if you want to go for more standard um either doomfist or um uh, sigma then kaluj is really really good on that role so i like their dps a little more i think that they're the difference but that's a super close fun match between two top teams then you got Dallas Fuel versus Vancouver, so I'm not going to pick Vancouver to beat Dallas. I'm also going to say it's 3-0, especially if Dallas is 0-3. I think they're going to be, you know, either way they're going to be super motivated. You know, they're trying to make up that map differential and that 0-2. Um, but I think that they're just kind of, they're going to play angry, they're going to play fast, they're going to play controlled, and they're just going to, quite frankly, mop the floor with Vancouver. Next is Florida Mayhem versus San Fran Shock. So another another interesting one. I'm going to go with San Francisco, though, and I'm going to say it's 3-0. Um, Florida, I think that they still have a little bit of an issue with someone. Um, it feels like they either need to, when they're playing completely around him and focusing in on him and enabling him, it's really good because he's a very aggressive player. Um, it feels like there's been moments where it's like, well, is he going? Is Hydron going? Like, who are we really enabling right now? Um, and it feels like it's created some, you know, not tension between players, but like in-game um, inconsistencies with their team. Um, you know, I, I obviously can't speak for um, their camaraderie, in, you know, inside the inside the facility. You know, it might be the best in the league, but I still think that there's a little bit of a disconnect sometimes between that support line and someone, um, you know, where he kind of has something else in mind and they have something else in mind, and um, the DPS players kind of get kind of get lost in the uh, at sea a little bit when that happens. So San Francisco is is quite clean. You know, they're one of the most mistake free teams in the league. They're they feel like the New York Excelsior from like seasons two and three, you know, cause season one, New York was just dominant seasons two and three. New York was still really good. They played mostly mistake free overwatch. You know, they, they let you come to them. They let you make mistakes and they kind of capitalize on it. That almost feels like San Francisco for me, you know, when they play the good teams, um, they're a little bit more passive and they're, you know, very disciplined, especially for how young they are. But I got San Francisco taking that one down. Another great matchup after that. You got LA Gladiators taking on Houston Outlaws. We got nice starts for both of these teams. Um, you know, they last faced off in the kickoff clash with the Gladiators taking that one down pretty convincingly um, in a 3 0. I think this one's a little bit closer. Um, I love that we got to see Dante in on the Tracer a bit. You know, we also saw him on the Fist on a, on a map or two. But I really, really like that rotation. Um, and whether it, you know, whoever is getting time off, Piggy has been really good. And then Dante has been really good on tank. But now that we have Tracer being in the meta, you know, seeing Dante back on it is great because he is, you know, one of the OGs on that hero. And to this day, he's still so, so clean on it. Unfortunately, he's going up against the MVP in my eyes so far this season in Kevster, um, who I think is the best tracer in the league right now you know i think proper could make a case for that as well and you know others in the mix but i just think he's the best in the league right now um you know gladiators we saw a little bit more ons this past weekend but we also you know still saw patty a decent amount um you know they had some really nice moments on the soldier i don't think they're quite top tier yet um but between that and reiner this team looks extremely extremely dangerous um you know as we we could potentially see more and more um double off support you know they're very well suited for that with skewed um and shoe so i think the gladiators are a bit better right now but i think houston makes this one more competitive than their last match out um i think that this is a slightly better matchup and a slightly better meta for the outlaws and i think that that's going to show in their results uh, leading up to the tournament and in the tourney itself and finally, we have Boston Uprising taking on the Paris Eternal. So, Boston, eh, they looked okay. Paris, you know, looked improved. They got their first win. Um, 
I'm not talking about a nice pickup. Like, you know, obviously they've they've dropped a couple of players. You know, their their original DPS line is gone. Um, you know, and we talked about those improvements going into week number one um, of this uh, tournament. But they look solid. You cannot forget about Khan in the back line. He's been phenomenal. Um, you know, and whether whichever tank that they've had in, you know, whether it's Vestola um, or Don, it's looked pretty solid. So I like Paris. I think they're trending up a bit. I'm going to take them in this one, three to one. You know, I saw, I saw some clutch factor. I saw some, you know, some real synergy, um, you know, between all, all facets, you know, tank line, support line, DPS line. Um, and while Boston doesn't look terrible, they looked, they, they were a little disappointing to me um in the past week you know their their looks when they have punk out just haven't really impressed me yet uh, i think they'll probably win a map with him in but other than that i just think paris is a bit of a better team right now so those are the predictions for week number two of the mid season madness let me know what you think down in the comments below curious to hear your thoughts you know what's going on in the the very hard to predict east you know and and are we going to see more of the same in the west or some of the teams that struggled are they gonna did they figure something out and are they going to improve um either way i'm excited to watch the matches i hope you guys are as well as always thank you very much for watching let me know what you think in the comments below and have yourselves a wonderful weekend I'm starting to get it's really starting to feel summer now. Um, but other than that, as always, I will see you guys in the next one.